In this video we're going to take a look at a couple of exam style questions using complex numbers and loci on the argand diagram. So example one says on one argand diagram sketch the locus of points satisfying the magnitude or the modulus of z minus 3 plus 2i equals 4 and the argument of z minus 1 is equal to minus a quarter pi. Later on in the question we need to do something combining both of these but for now let's just focus on how we would sketch these two loci problems. So we should know that if it's a magnitude or if it's a modulus it's telling us that distance is equal to 4 and we're looking for all complex numbers z which satisfy this equation. So z is going to represent a circle and all of the points on the circle are a distance of 4 away. Importantly for this because this, it's not just the magnitude of z, it's the magnitude of z minus. Write it like this, so that we can see where the centre of our circle is. So that would be minus 3 minus 2. So the centre of our circle is going to be 3 minus 2i, and the radius of our circle is going to be equal to 4. Okay. So 3 minus 2, which means that when I draw this, majority will be in this quadrant. Okay, three across, two down, distance. Now this one's a bit of an awkward one to be honest. Normally when you get questions like this on the more recent exam questions, um, the circle will just touch one of the axes, it'll be a tangent, so it might go to the origin. For this one, because the radius is 4, um, clearly it's going to cut through both of these axes, isn't it? Like if that distance there is 3, then it's going to go 3 plus 1 more, it's going to be over there. And if that distance there is 2, it'll be 2 plus 2 up that way, so it's going to be up here. The radius, like where would it be? I, mean, I suppose if we want to draw this accurately, we should think about where, th what's the distance from the origin. In other words, is the circle going to go this side of the origin, or is it going to go this side of the origin? Okay, so that distance, if you think about that triangle, if we do Pythagoras with this, that would be the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 13. And if you want to compare the square root of 13 with 4, obviously you can use your calculator. But a quick way of comparing these, if we square both sides, 13 is less than 16, so root 13 is less than 4. If root 13 is less than 4, 13 is less than 16. So if the distance here is root 13 and the radius is 4, if we know 4 is bigger, that means essentially the circle is going to be over there. It's going to be further away because the total distance would be 4 and the distance from the origin is root 13. Okay. Again, as I say, it's a bit of an unusual question, this, in the way that it's put together. It, it is taken from like an old paper. Um, usually when you sketch things, you should label where it crosses axes, but I've checked the marking for this one, and you didn't need to show where it crosses the real axis and the imaginary axis. So all it wants you to do is draw a circle. Again, apologies for my horrific circle drawing. Um, but you guys should use a compass. <laughs> I'm blaming the whiteboard, it's harder to draw it on the whiteboard, honestly. So there's your circle there, uh, centre. I'm not going to write its coordinates, I want to write centre equals 3 minus 2i. Okay. So on the same argon diagram, we also need to sketch this argument. Now when you get an argument, it's a half line. Okay, so the argument of z minus, put it in a bracket. So inside that bracket, if it's minus 1, it would be 1 plus 0i. Okay, so the, the half line is going to be measured from 1 on the real axis, 0 on the imaginary axis. So if we move across, 
to 1. That's where we're going to measure this half line from. Okay, so that's going to be where the half line starts. Now the argument is equal to minus 1 quarter of pi. So when the argument is negative, we have to measure from the positive real axis. Starting at this point, which is 1, we're going to go this way because it's a negative argument. Pi over 4, don't forget, it's like 45 degrees. And there is actually a there is one sort of good thing about this question, you know, saying it was a bit sloppy the way it's sort of just the circle is up here, but there's something that we would need to show to get the four marks on this. Because if you notice that because that's a 45 degree, ang degree angle, the gradient of this half line is minus one. And if you notice, there's this big significance here in the fact that the, to get four marks, this half line should clearly go through the center of that circle. Because you can see that if that distance is 3, from 1 to 3, that distance is 2. That distance is 2. So that gradient, negative 1 there, means that if we start from that point, we should draw the half line. See the centre. Okay. Um, I suppose I should label as well that angle there is pi over 4. The last part of the question then just says, indicate on your sketch the set of points satisfying both of these conditions okay so the first part says the distance has got to be less than or equal to four so if we're measuring a distance from this point the distance is from this point when the distance is equal to four we get the circle so if the distance is less than or equal to four that just means it's got to be inside the circle so we're looking for the complex numbers that are inside the circle. Now, if it was just asking me for this, I'd just shade all the points inside the circle, all of the points inside, and all the points on the circle and inside the circle satisfy this inequality. But it has to be inside the circle, and it also also has to have this argument. In other words, it's got to be along the line and inside the circle. So it as all the mark scheme does on this is it just sort of does a bold line but you could just label it and say the answer for part b needs to be inside circle and on the half line okay next example um, so as indicated on the argon diagram, the region for which distance less than or equal to 2, so we're going to end up with a circle because it's less than or equal to 2, we're going to get all the points inside the circle. Okay. Then part B, complex number Z, satisfies this. So basically this is a fancy way of saying, look, if the complex number satisfies this, we're looking at all the complex numbers that are inside the circle or on the circle as well, on the, on the, on the circumference. And we're aiming to find the range of possible values for the argument of Z. Bit of a tricky one this for an interpretation the first time we see this, but a lot of the exam style questions that you can practice do involve a little bit of geometry. Now when I say a little bit of geometry, I mean it's basically just understanding of right angle triangles, bit of soccer tower, bit of Pythagoras. Um, and you need a sketch to help you to, to think about these exam style questions with these low high questions. So let's start with the diagram. Um, and then we can think about what this last part of the question is asking. So again, good practice to write it as z minus, so it would be 0 plus 4i so we're going to be, the circle is going to be centred at 4 on the imaginary axis. So obviously when I draw this Most of the stuff is going to be occurring up here. So if we go 4, the radius is 2. So I'm going to try and draw this roughly to scale. Okay, so if the radius is 2, it would go to 2 and up to 6. 
on the imaginary axis. Okay, so that's not too bad. Um, indicating the argon diagram, the region for which, so if it was equal to 2, we'd get the circle, but because it's less than or equal to 2, I'm just going to shade inside the circle. Next part of the question then, part B. We, it, it tells us the complex number satisfies this. So basically it's saying, look, the complex number Z satisfies this. So it said is a point on the circle. So it could be anywhere inside the circle or anywhere on the circle. And we want to find the range. So we're looking when it's asked for a range, it's, it's an inequality, it's gonna be an interval. The range of possible values for the argument of Z. Now imagine let's just generally pick a point. So if I pick that point there. The argument of that point, if we measure the argument of Z, remember when it's just the argument of Z, you measure it from the origin. So what we're going to do is measure arguments from the origin to the to, to the complex number that we're just calling Z. And clearly we'd never get an argument of zero. Like if the if the Z was over there, the complex number would have an argument of zero, but that's not going to give us a point on the circle. Okay? If we pick the point here, that would have an argument of pi over 2, and that would potentially be a possible argument that we could use. So clearly pi over 2 is going to be in our interval, and it's using circle properties as well as a bit of um, soccer tower this question. If you think about it, if we draw a tangent from the origin, I'm drawing on my answer to part A. If it was in an exam situation, just draw your sketch for part A and then draw another sketch for part B to, to do your work and on. But just so we can all visualise this together, I'm just going to draw a line to the part A. Now that tangent there gives us this point. Let's call that Z1. And that would be like the minimum possible argument, wouldn't it? Like that that's the point on the on the circle that's got the smallest possible argument. So if I said what's the argument of Z1, that would be the minimum. Clearly, if we keep on going as we rotate around, we're going to get more complex numbers with bigger arguments. Then we get to that point there, that's going to have an argument of pi over 2. We get, keep going, we get complex numbers over here, which have got bigger and bigger arguments. And then the final point with the biggest possible argument, which is measured from the origin, would be the other tangent. is a maximum. I would recommend you pause and think if you can try and construct what's going to happen next. So once you've inserted the question, just pause it and see how, how could you figure out what those angles are. Okay, so we focus on just maybe this side first. You can see that using circle properties, this tangent is clearly perpendicular to the radius. So we just get a right angle triangle, like quite often in, in these questions with the geometry. It's not, once you've interpreted it, it's not actually that difficult. It, it just normally breaks down to some sort of right angle triangle hidden somewhere. And if we focus on this right angle triangle, we know that that distance there is 4. Because that's where the centre of the circle is. We also know that distance there is the radius, so that distance there is 2. So we've got enough information to solve this. Um, let's call this angle here alpha. And if you think about it, could I find that angle alpha? And if I can find that angle alpha, I'd be able to work out this angle, which is the important one. That's going to be the argument of Z1, isn't it? Because we have to measure the argument this way. But we can find this angle inside this triangle. So think about what we know. Um, we know the opposite side, and we know the hypotenuse. So the sine of alpha is 2 over 4. With practice, you will notice the same angles always come up. You can just make sure you calculate in radians, do sine inverse, but that would give us, if we've got sine alpha as a half, 
then alpha is equal to pi over 6, also known as 30 degrees, but we'll do it in radians. So if that angle is pi over 6, this angle over here needs to add up to give us pi over 2. Because remember, we know this is a right angle, so it's the same as same as the same as pi over 2. So if you do pi over 2 minus pi over 6, you get pi over 3. So this argument here, pi over 3, is going to be our minimum possible argument. Okay. Try and figure out what the maximum possible argument would be then. Okay, so there is actually a bit of symmetry involved here, which is nice. it's always nice to take a step back and try and visualise this if you can. Like this is a reflection in the in the imaginary axis. These are these are basically the same triangles that are similar triangles that have been reflected, haven't they? We know that's pi over three. We know that's pi over six already. We know that's pi over six. So actually, if you think about it, we know that this pi, the straight line has got an, an angle of pi, and that's one third. That's one sixth. That's one sixth. That's also one third. So the maximum argument, this this point here, which is z two, the maximum argument would be pi over three plus pi over six plus pi over six, also known as two thirds of pi. So it'd be two pi over three, wouldn't it? So we could say if the arguments go between pi over three and two pi over three. The answer to the question, which was find the range of possible arguments, the arguments of z in general would be anywhere in between pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. So that would give us anywhere, anywhere in this circle minimum argument with pi over 3, maximum argument with 2 pi over 3. Okay, thanks guys.